What's up guys, this is Preheat. This is the part 2 of my Fire Mage guide for 9.2. If you haven't already watched part 1, I definitely recommend that you go check that out first because this video is assuming that you already have all that information available, you already understand the basics, and it's going to be a little bit more of a, uh, a higher level discussion about Fire Mage, right? So if you're looking for details about how to gear, what trinkets to use, talents, all that good stuff, definitely go check out part 1 and then get that information and then come back once you're done with that. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about rotation. Now, a quick disclaimer before we get started. A lot of the stuff that we're going to be covering today actually overlaps with the previous video. So I'm going to be repeating myself a lot. We're also going to be showing some footage from the previous video and, and talking about that as well. Um, also, this character that I'm playing is, uh, is, is moderately geared, right? I don't have bad gear by any means, but it's definitely not best in slot. I do have four piece. I have uh, a sigil trinket, but I'm basically full heroic gear. And I'm definitely the, uh, the least geared person in this raid, aside from maybe healers. Um, but, uh, you know, the reason why I'm showing this footage of a character that's a little bit less geared is because I want to give you all an idea of kind of where your damage should be at if you don't really have best in slot, right? Like if you're still progressing through the bosses, if you're still getting the, the raid down, if you're still uh, gearing up your character, you don't need to have uh, perfect gear to do good damage. You just mainly need to focus on having the, the important stuff, right? That's going to be four piece. That's going to be sigil. That's going to be a lot of haste. Those are the most important things that you need to have to be able to do good damage, at least from a gearing perspective as a fire mage. Uh, so to start things off, I'd like to talk about four main drivers for why players uh, did I look at whenever I'm looking at logs, right? And trying to figure out why people's damage is bad. What are the four main reasons why people aren't doing as much damage as they should be? So number one is going to be a little bit outside of your control, but it is important to, to acknowledge, right? It's a little bit of an elephant in the room. If you are not getting power infusion as a fire mage, if you're not getting benevolent fairy on fights where your combustion timing doesn't really mesh well with the, the encounter and you have to wait on combustion a really long time, your damage is going to be lower, right? Like that's that's just inevitable. Um, there's really nothing you can do when it comes to having those ex or to, to not having those externals, right? Like you just need to have those externals if you want to do really good damage. If those externals are going to a warlock instead, right? Like it's understandable that, you know, it's known to happen. Uh, but uh, just be aware that like the, the biggest driver in your damage, if you if you're playing correctly, is going to be power infusion. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's it's unfortunate, right? It's it's kind of I, I don't like the, the current meta of rating with the externals. I think they're pretty, uh, you know, pretty undesirable for the game's health as, as a whole. But, you know, this is where we're at, right? Like and it does need to, need to be acknowledged just straight away that no PI equals less damage, obviously. Anyways, so uh, yeah, so the number two thing that I see is improper use of cooldowns and uh, not really using like the the parts, the, the mechanics of the fight to your advantage. So what I mean by that is not taking advantage of AOE whenever it presents itself, uh, you know, not having good combustion timing to line it up with uh, with, you know, damage amps and that sort of thing. Now, I'm not advocating for you to just like uh ignore you know the boss's health and just aoe as much as you can just pad the damage as high as possible um you know that's that's not going to be beneficial to your raid and it's probably not going to make people like you right like if you're just padding aoe all the time uh but i do feel like it does need to be acknowledged that like it will affect your damage right like if there's aoe available in a fight like for instance anduin right like you're doing fire on anduin and there's aoe and you're not aoe that is going to cause your damage to be much much lower now, it probably will also help you kill the boss, right? So it's a little bit of a, you know, it's a little bit of a conundrum, right? Like we we have obviously situations where we want to do as much damage as possible, but we also have situations where uh, we want to be playing for the team, right? We want to be doing as much damage as possible for, for everyone else for our success in the raid. So uh, I feel like it's also important to kind of talk about both those things. But uh, whenever it comes to combustion timing, that actually does kind of factor into point one, right? Where we were talking about externals, especially Benevolent Fairy. Fairy is so important for you on fights where combustion timings aren't going to line up well. Uh, and you will need to hold combustion in situations where you don't get Fairy if uh, if you want your cooldowns to line up well. Uh, as you can see here, right, I'm holding combustion because I want to make sure that this combustion is up for, uh, for this mind control that's coming up here. Um, but yeah, so make sure that you're using your cooldowns uh, whenever they're best for you to use them in the raid. There's no one size fits all for this. I wish there was. I wish I could just give you the exact cooldown timings you should use. But unfortunately, that's not really something that exists, right? Like it kind of depends on your raid. It kind of depends on uh, the, the way that you're approaching the fight, your, your strategy, right? Your comp. There's a lot of things that kind of factor into when you should use your cooldowns. But uh, generally speaking, you want to use combustion as much as possible in the fight. You don't want to use, uh, you don't want to be holding combustion so long that you lose usages of it across the fight, but you also want to make sure that you're lining up combustion with 
damage amps. All right, so number three is gonna be uh, just not casting, just idling, right? If you're playing Fire Mage and you aren't constantly casting abilities, you're losing damage. So obviously you wanna be scorching whenever available. You wanna be using things that are instant cast while you're moving. Uh, it's very important that you're maximizing your damage uh, by just using abilities, right? Even if you're pressing an ability that is the wrong ability to press, if it's not like a long cooldown or something like that, you're probably going to end up with more damage at the end if you were pressing buttons the whole time, as opposed to if you were, you know, idling during the fight. So, uh, you know, that's that's another thing that's important to consider whenever you're looking at your damage is just how much activity you had, how much, uh, how much were you actually doing damage to the boss versus just standing around waiting for things to happen. Uh, and this is actually something that cuts both ways because if you don't have constant uptime on the boss and if you have cooldown reduction from doing damage like kindling then you're actually using uh you're losing more than just the damage uh of your idle time you're also losing the cooldown reduction that you would have gained from doing damage during that time as well so it's uh you know it's definitely something that you need to be aware of uh whenever you're going to the raid Number four is just going to be survivability. As a mage, you have a lot of buttons that keep you alive. So make sure that you're using your mirror images, your alter time. Make sure that if you've got Vintir in the raid that you're using uh, Arcane Intellect for that absorb shield from the uh, coin of appreciation. All that stuff really does add up over the fight and it definitely helps you to survive. Survival is number one, right? And if you're dead, you can't do damage. Uh, Fire Mage does have a, uh, a way to get out of jail free, essentially, with Cauterize. And if you're playing Dreamweaver, you can, you can also use the cheat death from uh, from Dreamweaver there. But, uh, you know, definitely surviving is going to be the number one thing. If you're just standing in a pool and you're, you know, trying to get a hard cast pyro, a pyro blast off because, uh, you know, your, your buff's about to expire, it can definitely feel really, really bad to have to interrupt your cast and then lose that usage. But it's definitely going to be preferable to dying, right? Like, if you're dead, you're not doing damage. If there's no res available so make sure that you're uh make, make sure that you're making smart decisions whenever it comes to this kind of thing all right now with that out of the way let's go ahead and talk about the rotation so uh basically you want to get as many combustions off in the fight as possible in those combustions you want to cast as many pyroblasts as possible some of those pyroblasts are going to be hard cast some of them are going to be instant cast uh but essentially the name of the game is just get hot streak use hot streak on pyroblast etc etc this is for single target uh, now you do notice that I uh, I did cast a Rune of Power there before my hard cast Pyroblast. Uh, you do want to make sure that you have Rune of Power up for as much of combustion as possible. You want to use Rune of Power if you have at least six seconds left on combustion or more. Uh, so that does mean that you you do cast it during combustion, right? So whenever you get that first uh, SKB of the fight uh, in your combustion, you want to make sure that you cast your Rune of Power before you start hard casting your Pyroblast. That way, whenever you uh, you go back into it, right. You already have Rune of Power down. It's totally fine if Rune of Power is down with another Rune of Power that came from your initial combustion for a couple seconds. Uh, I, I would say probably no more than like one, one or two seconds, but uh, you know, it's, it's okay if, if it has a little bit of overlap there. Um, but uh, but yeah, you want to generate as many of those uh, SKB stacks as possible. Whenever you get to those, uh, whenever you get to full stacks of SKB, you want to immediately hard cast a Pyroblast because you don't want to be wasting SKB stacks, right? Like if you are casting Pyroblast with a with a hot streak during your SKB proc whenever it's ready to go, you're you're effectively wasting uh, stacks that you could have, which in a way is wasting uptime on combustion, right? So you want to make sure that you're making use of combustion as much as possible. Definitely don't be wasting uptime on combustion by casting uh, Pyroblast while your SKB is available. All right, let's talk about the Vintir opener. Now, if you already understand the Vintir opener, this is going to be footage from part one. So feel free to skip over this if you like to just get to Night Fae or the AoE portion. But uh, yeah, let's kick it over to myself. On the opener, we either want to precast a Pyroblast or we want to precast a Mirrors of Torment. It just depends on, you know, what the tank is doing with the boss, how, how long it's going to take the boss to walk over to the tank on which one you want to cast, okay? But basically, if you're doing the Pyroblast, you want to do it from max range, and you want to do it so that your spell does not hit before your raid pulls the boss. So don't don't be casting Pyroblast as the, the boss is already pulled, right? Make sure that you're only doing this as a pre-cast, all right? As long as your cast doesn't hit the boss, because it has travel time, before the boss is pulled, your raid will not be upset at you for this. All right, so no really pulling, obviously. Uh, but for Vintir, basically, uh, you know, as soon as we get that done, we're going to want to cast Mirrors of Torment. Uh, like I mentioned before, you can pre-cast Mirrors of Torment too, right? It's it's up to you. Uh, but as soon as you cast Mirrors of Torment, you're wanting to cast a Fireball and then immediately Combustion and Fire Blast twice. 
So the reason why we want to combust while we're casting Fireball is because we need to have time to actually get the Fire Blast out. Fire Blast does have an internal cooldown of 0.5 seconds. So uh, you can't just, you know, let two go right away, okay? Like you have to give yourself enough runway to get both Fire Blasts out. So the reason why we want to do this uh, with two Fire Blasts is because we want to start the fight with two stacks of Infernal Cascade, which is our conduit that increases our fire damage. Uh, on both the, the Pyro Blast that you're casting, the instant cast one, and also the fire Fireball that you're hard casting there. Okay, so note that your first Pyro Blast, if it crit, you only need one to get the hot streak. But if you're going to be lusting the pull because of Mirrors of Torment, I recommend that you always just go with two Fire Blasts because you're going to be getting three stacks regardless back. Okay, uh, so if you're lusting the pull, just always go with two. Uh, as soon as that first Pyroblast leaves your hands, you're going to want to use your trinkets, you're going to want to use your damage ratios, your potions, just everything. Just send it all because you're going to be in your big cooldown, okay? So uh, basically what we do as soon as that is, is done is we want to alternate between Pyroblast and Fireblast while maintaining two stacks of Infernal Cascade. The goal here is we want to have two stacks of Infernal Cascade the whole time and we want to get as many Pyroblasts off as possible while also maintaining as much combustion uptime as possible with SKB, our new legendary that we're using this tier. Uh, so this should be really easy thanks to our four piece bonus, because remember our four piece bonus gives us cooldown reduction on Fire Blast during combustion. So if you don't have a Fire Blast available, you can use Phoenix Flames as kind of like a, a stop cap, uh, but you're gonna wanna use your SKB as soon as it's ready. So as soon as you see your Sun King's Blessing buff ready because you consumed eight hot streaks, you want to immediately hard cast a Pyroblast to extend the duration of Combustion. It actually will extend it if you're already inside of Combustion. Now keep in mind though, if your Rune of Power buff is going to expire before the hard cast finishes, remember Rune of Power lasts 12 seconds from when you Combustion, right? So if Rune of Power is going to expire before your hard cast finishes, what you're going to want to do instead is to cast Rune of Power first and then hard cast your Pyroblast. This means that you may actually have two Rune of Powers below your feet for maybe a second or two, okay? But that's okay. It's totally fine if you do that, all right? And uh, and basically, as soon as that hard cast finishes, you're gonna have your combustion extended, all right? Now, while you're hard casting that Pyroblast, you may have to Fire Blast to keep your Infernal Cascade uh, stacks at two. Okay, so just make sure that you do that and that you're, you know, you're queuing up another Pyroblast as soon as the hard cast is finishing. That way you can immediately Pyro Blast again. Remember, name of the game is we just wanna get as many Pyro Blasts as possible while also maintaining two stacks of Infernal Cascade. This means that we maintain the buff while also using every single uh, hot streak without munching any procs, ideally, okay? Yeah, basically, uh, you want to get as much bang for your buck uh, with your SKB hard cast. So if you're playing Pyroclasm, which is that talent uh, that's you know really good if you're getting power infusion, especially, if you're using Pyroclasm, try to have a Pyroclasm proc banked for your SKB. But, but don't hold on to it for too long, right? Like what I generally recommend is uh, if you're in your opener, try to send your first Pyroclasm proc if you're lucky before you have to cast Phoenix Flames. Ideally, if we can get through a combustion without casting a single Phoenix Flames, that's like the best bang for our buck we can possibly have, okay? While also not munching Fire Blast. So you, like the perfect combustion, like if you have good RNG with Pyroclasm, is uh, you basically, as soon as you end up using all your Fire Blasts, you immediately are Pyroclasming and then you're doing your hard cast uh, SKV with Pyroclasm, and then you never end up having to use a Phoenix Flame because you just keep getting Pyroclasm procs, okay? That's like ideal. But obviously, you know, that's, un you know, it's extremely lucky to be in that situation, right? So as a backup, you can use your Phoenix Flames if you need to. Uh, you shouldn't really run out of Phoenix Flames anymore with, with the four piece bonus, but if you do for whatever reason, uh, especially in AoE, you're gonna run out, right? So just use Scorch if that's the case. If you don't have a Phoenix Flame or Fire Blast available, uh, just use Scorch. You do not want to waste potential SKB stacks. Very important. You want to try to use your hard cast as soon as you have SKB available because it keeps you from consuming hot streaks while you have the hard cast, uh, hard cast buff ready, essentially munching those procs, okay? Because you, you will waste uh, SKB stacks if you have SKB ready and you're just, you know, hot streaking over and over and just generating hot streaks and spending them, right? We don't want that. We want to use as many SKBs in the fight as possible because that's going to increase our combustion uptime. So a sample sequence is going to look something like this. Mirrors of Torment here, Fireball, Combustion, Fire Blast twice, end with a Pyro Blast, and then another Pyro Blast, and then Fire Blast, Pyro Blast, Fire Blast, Pyro Blast, you know, times six, times eight, whatever it is, depending on your haste. Um, if you have any, uh, you know, if you have any Pyroclasm procs, be sure to use those. 
And if you don't, then uh, go with the Phoenix Flame instead. And then uh, after that, we're going to be using Rune of Power, Hard Casting Power Blast. That's with our SKB available. And then uh, during that hard cast, we may use a Fire Blast and then queue up a Pyro Blast at the very end there. And then more Pyro Blast, Fire Blast, Pyro Blast, Phoenix Flame, Pyro Blast, just alternating until you're done with Combustion. If you run out of both of those, then use Scorch. Now, during combustion, I recommend either jumping or strafing while you do this because it will prevent you from accidentally hard casting a power blast when you don't mean to, which is going to be a huge damage loss since you're essentially just idling during combustion, which is your highest damage phase, right? Uh, if you do run out of Phoenix Flames, like I mentioned before, just sub and scorch. Uh, you shouldn't really have this problem with, with four piece, uh, but in AoE, you, you definitely will scorch a bit. All right, welcome back to the present. So now we're going to talk about the Night Fate opener. And I will say that in single target, the Night Fate opener is definitely a little bit more complicated, definitely less straightforward. And the reason for that is because it actually depends on your haste, what sort of buffs you have available uh, whenever it comes to your haste and how many stacks of SKB you're going into combustion with for how you want to go about it. But uh, let's let's talk about the, uh, the basics, all right? So um, number one, you're going to be casting shifting power during combustion. So make sure that you're close enough to your target for shifting power to make contact with your target. That way it does the damage whenever you cast that spell. Now you're only going to cast shifting power once your runa power is on cooldown and once you have no fire blast charges available. Okay, that's the requirement for you to cast uh, your runa power and then immediately cast shifting power. Okay, but because of this, it may kind of, uh, you know, there's, there's some conflicts there, right? Like you may have a situation where it lines up so that basically you're wanting to run the power and shifting power right as you're going into your SKB hardcast. And if that's the case, then there's really no way to avoid either munching stacks of fire blast or maybe overlapping run the power for about three seconds, right? So you just kind of have to play it by ear, but essentially you want to just start off your combustion like you would normally, only this time you're not casting Mirrors of Torment, right? So you're just going to go straight into your combustion. Once you get your SKB procs available and you're ready to do that hardcast, you're probably going to want to cast Runa Power into Shifting Power and then use up some Fire Blast there so that you don't, you know, stack at three for too long and then immediately hard cast your Pyro Blast and then continue Combustion normally. Once you're done with Shifting Power, it gets a little bit easier because you don't have to think about things as much. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a little awkward. I'll be honest, like the, the Night Face single target open there is definitely not. Uh, it doesn't feel great, especially if you don't have a lot of haste. But, uh, you know, it is inevitable that you are going to either overlap Rune of Powers or you might munch a Fire Blast Charge, especially with better conduits, right? Because we're getting a lot more cooldown reduction from uh, from Shifting Power now that we have those higher level conduits. Um, but yeah, I mean, essentially it's the same thing, right? You start off your Combustion, you're using Fire Blast, you're using Pyre, uh, Phoenix Flames, you're alternating so that you keep your Infernal Cascades stacks up. It's very important that you keep those stacks up. And then whenever you're ready to, to go into your hard cast, you can go ahead and cast your Rune of Power, use Shifting Power. Once you use up the uh, the Fire Blast that you get from Shifting Power, because you will need the Fire Blast during Shifting Power to make sure that you don't munch stacks, right? But once you use those up, you should have a hard cast available. You'll go into that hard cast and then immediately continue Combustion onwards. I know this is probably a little bit complicated, but maybe it'll make a little bit more sense if you just watch this part of the video over and over again. Uh, I went ahead and just did a, a whole bunch of different openers on this target to kind of give you some variants there to see kind of where the uh, the idea is. But um, if you do it right, you shouldn't munch any fire blasts. You shouldn't really lose any hot streaks. Uh, they're giving you those SKB buffs and you really shouldn't overlap those arena powers too much. And, um, you know, it, going into your SKB after combustion, you should be able to carry those infernal cascade stacks over. This one's definitely going to take a little bit more practice, but definitely practice both versions where you SKB before Rune of Power into Shifting Power and when you SKB after, because you will use both very commonly, right? In any situation where you have a lot of haste, once again, or you go in with SKB stacks, you're going to be SKBing before Rune of Power Shifting Power. And in any situation where uh, you go in fresh and you don't have any stacks, maybe you don't have Lust available or PI, maybe you're not a troll, in that case, you'll you'll definitely want to get used to doing Rune of Power, Shifting Power into SKB Hardcast. I'm going to go ahead and let this last example play out, but just some closing thoughts as we watch. So Night Fae Fire Mage in single target definitely doesn't feel great. It does okay damage. It's definitely an option if you aren't getting PI. But I'd say primarily the reason to go Night Fae is going to be if you're doing some AoE, right? Like that's the real power of Night Fae is doing AoE. And Night Fae is, is very good at doing AoE damage. So you're going to want to know how to do a single target combustion because in a mythic plus where there's a boss, maybe single target and you're using combustion, you're going to need to know how to do a single target combustion. Also, if you're doing a fight like Artificer Zymox, 
you know, there's there's situations where you may want to do a single target combustion, especially like in the last phase. So uh, knowing this stuff is important, but it's it's also uh, it's also important to just remember that we don't really play Night Fae for single target. It's about AOE, and as long as you're doing really, really good AOE damage as Night Fae, you're probably going to do well. Uh, definitely give this a lot of practice, though. Get your reps in and, uh, you know, get familiar with the single target rotation because it is definitely something to know. We touched on this briefly in the part one video, but if you're playing Pyroclasm as Night Fae, uh, basically, you're... You're going to use SKB after you use Rune of Power and Shifting Power, unless you don't get any procs whatsoever. Uh, so essentially just do the same thing, but make sure that you use your Pyroclasm procs whenever available. Make sure that you get the most out of those procs. And, uh, you know, I, I don't really recommend playing uh, this this talent, but if you do want to play this talent, just make sure that you're hard casting Pyroblast. Try to have it line up with your SKB whenever possible. And, uh, you know, just... Just accept that you're probably always going to use SKB after Rune of Power and Shifting Power. So hopefully that clears up how to do the opener and how to do Combustion. Outside of Combustion, it's pretty simple. You really just cast Fireballs until you get Fire Blast available and you use those Fire Blasts to make Pyroblast. You don't want to munch any SKB procs, right? And you're going to use like Rune of Power, Shifting Power, that stuff. You're going to want to use those as, as much as you can throughout the fight to get as many cooldowns off as possible. This is true regardless of what Covenant you are. Uh, if you're Vintir, if you're Night Fae, it doesn't really matter. It's all the same idea. Uh, just as long as you're going into every combustion with the Fire Blast available, as long as you're utilizing Rune of Power as best you can, as long as you're using Mirrors of Torment in between combustions, if available right, that's if you're not going Kindling, if you're going Pyroclasm. Uh, specifically, you'll you'll want to make sure that you use uh, Mirrors of Torment in between each combustion with your Rune of Power and hopefully SKB proc. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's all essentially the, the same idea. You just want to get those SKB procs. You want to use them as much as possible. You want to use your cooldowns. And then in the meantime, you just fill with fireballs and, and fire blasts and pyro blasts. And there are situations where you may not use a fire blast to generate a hot streak, right? If you've got a combustion coming up soon, or if you're about to go into an SKB combustion with Rune of Power, just try to not be too aggressive with your cooldown usage. You don't want to, you know, have to wait to combust because you don't have Fire Blast available. That's always really bad. Uh, you want to try and line up your SKB with Rune of Power whenever you can. Uh, bonus points if you can line up a Mirrors of Torment with that or you know, have a Shifting Power as well. You definitely can delay your SKB proc a little bit if you have your Fire Blast on cooldown. And if you're like at 7, you see Rune of Power is maybe 5 or 10 seconds off. If you kind of slow roll it and don't really use Fire Blast and just try to RNG out some hot streaks by casting Fireballs, you can definitely add a couple seconds. And that way, whenever your Rune of Power comes off cooldown, you can just immediately Rune of Power into a Pyro Blast hard cast, right, to get the SKB. And then you'll probably have, you know, two to three Fire Blast uh, charges to use during that SKB combustion. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it takes a lot to kind of get used to, but you, you just really want to have the approach of, um, you're, you're focusing on your cooldowns and everything is about the cooldowns and you're playing around that, right? And everything else is secondary. It's just about trying to get as much out of your combustion up. With Searing Touch, also don't forget to uh, Scorch whenever your target reaches 30% or lower. Or if any other adjacent target has 30%, go ahead and Scorch off that target with the Focus Macro. Uh, but yeah, whenever you're in Execute, the idea is you just want to save your Fire Blast for your SKB procs because you're going to be generating those pretty easily with Scorch. Make sure, make sure that you do not cap out, though, on your Fire Blast charges. So basically only use Fire Blast whenever you're about to cap out at 3. Okay, so for AoE, uh, you can go about this in a couple different ways. It really just depends on what legendaries you want to use. In this case, we're going to use Disciplinary Command because it's a little easier. You can also use SKB, and it's pretty straightforward as well. But the idea is you want to get your Frost Nova buff uh, for Frost before the pull. And then you're just going to immediately go into Combustion. And the idea is you just want to use your Phoenix Flames and your Fire Blast immediately and then Shifting Power. And then whenever you're in Shifting Power, you're going to be using Fire Blast, uh, you know, twice or three times, depending on your, your Conduit, right? To make sure that you get your cooldown reduction and you don't cap out on Fire Blast too hard. And then you're just going to immediately use those Fire Blasts in Phoenix Flames again. And then once you're done with that, once you're outside of Combustion... Uh, it really just depends on uh, like if you're able to stand still uh, or if you're not able to stand still. The, the rules of AoE outside of Combustion with Flame Patch, which by the way, this is all with Flame Patch, I hope. Uh, if you're AoE and you should have Flame Patch, uh, is uh, you can Dragon's Breath at three targets. You replace Pyroblast with Flame Strike at two targets outside of Combustion. Outside of Combustion without Flame Patch, you're going to Dragon's Breath at three targets, replace Pyroblast with Flame Strike at four targets. 
And then if you uh, have mana for it, you're going to Arcane Explosion afterwards. Um, you're just going to be constantly looking for targets that are below 30% though. That way you can Scorch off those targets and generate uh, those hot streaks very easily for AoE. So basically, whenever you're inside of Combustion, you replace Pyroblast with Flame Strike at six targets without Flame Patch, three targets with Flame Patch. As Night Fae, you aggressively use your Fire Blast if you have Shifting Power available, and you want to use Scorch a bit with Flame Strike if uh, you don't get Heating Up or if uh, targets are, you know, if you have a target that you can Scorch Execute. Um, outside of Combustion, you can also hard cast Flame Strike, which you've seen here. Uh, you can do this at three or more targets, but uh, I don't really recommend it generally because it does require you, obviously, to be standing still. It you know, it doesn't really work with a lot of affixes or if there's a lot of mechanics you have to move around with. Uh, but it is pretty easy and straightforward to do. You just use your, your Fire Blast to generate those uh, hot streaks while you're just hard casting Flame Strike, right? Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. If there's ever targets that go below 30% HP, though, you're definitely going to want to scorch off those targets to generate Flame Strikes instead with, uh, with Hot Streak. Um, but uh, you can also just choose a focus target, right? Whichever one is the one that you want to hit. Uh, and and fireball against that target, and then use those uh, you know the hot streaks that you get from converting the uh, the heating up from the fireball into a hot streak, and then use those for flame strikes as well. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of just hard casting flame strike because there's just way too many things that have uh, like a negative impact if you're trying to just sit there and hard cast flame strike. Also, if you ever have to move and you get interrupted, it's basically like you just wasted all the time that you're casting before. Uh, but it is uh, it is important that you know that you can hard cast flame strike at three target with SKB once again. If you're running that instead of disciplinary command, uh, it's basically the same thing as you know single target in the sense that you just use your SKB procs whenever they become available, and uh, make sure that you maximize combustion uptime as much as possible. And also keep in mind that you can once again you can flame strike hard cast if you want to generate that uh, that hot streak right. So just don't forget about that. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Um, as far as AoE as Vintir, I don't really recommend going Vintir for AoE. But if you are Vintir for AoE, the same rules apply. Uh, although, obviously, you don't cast Shifting Power. Instead, you have Mirrors of Torment. And just make sure that you cast that before the pull, right? So that uh, you can generate those Flame uh, Fire Blasts on, uh, on that target. But just remember that like, whenever you cast Mirrors of Torment, the target has to do something, right? So if it's a mob that's CC'd, or mob that just sits there and channels the spell forever and doesn't really do anything else, you aren't going to get procs from that. So you have to be really careful about what target you put Mirrors of Torment on. And you also don't want to be a target that dies early, because if it dies early, it's going to drop its mirrors, and then you just get nothing from it. And once again, outside of Combustion, you're basically just generating those SKB procs, so make sure that you're Scorching targets, make sure that outside of Combustion with Flame Patch, you're using Dragon's Breath at three targets, especially to interrupt Nasty Casts, and replace Pyroblast with Flame Strike at two targets. That's pretty much it for AoE. All right, and that concludes our part two for the fire guide uh, in 9.2. Thank you so much for your patience in this video coming out. And uh, apologies if my voice is a little rough. I'm still not feeling well, but uh, I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. Uh, but <clears throat> thank you all for watching. Appreciate y'all. If you like this video, go, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe so that you can watch my videos in Dragonfly. I'm definitely excited for 10.0. I'm looking into a new Gilda raid in and, uh, you know, gonna gonna try and play Evoker quite a bit too. I feel like Evoker has a lot of the things I like about Mage just from its initial information. We don't really have a ton of information yet, but I did write a, a like a write up for Wowhead. If you want to check that out, I'll definitely have a link in the description below. It looks like uh, the playstyle might be kind of similar to Mage in the sense that you're kind of like a mid ranged range player. So uh, I'm I've always been a fan of that kind of uh, that kind of playstyle, and I love the idea of like using arcane frost and fire magic, which is essentially, you know, blue magic is like arcane and frost fire. Obviously, uh, the red magic is fire. Uh, but yeah, it looks really fun. Uh, it looks really great. Definitely really excited for it. Sorry for this tangent. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I hope you all are excited for Dragonflight as well. I definitely am. am and I'm going to try to ramp up my content a little bit whenever uh, the expansion draws closer. But once again, thank you all for watching. Have a good one and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.